Hey, and welcome to today's case. In this video, we will dive into the tragic case of Pamela Hutchinson. Pamela, who lived in Bradenton, Florida, had just gone through a recent divorce from her husband of around 20 years. On April 3, 2018, Pamela traveled to Fort Myers Beach to support a grieving friend. Her friend's husband passed away, so Pamela, being the loving person she was, decided to go and support her friend and attend the memorial. Pamela was described as vivacious, adventurous, and fun. She was known for her kindness and made friends with everyone she met. Pamela was also in the middle of looking for a new place to call home and have a fresh start. On April 9, 2018, around 9 p.m., 911 received a chilling call from the manager of Marina Village, a popular resort. The manager would go on to explain how she found the body of a woman in one of the units. Then one that is Yes, uh, this is at uh, Marina Village in Snug Harbor down at Fort Myers Beach, and uh, there's a dead body in one of the units. And her body's covered in towels, and there's blood in there. Okay, stay on line. Let me connect. Hold on. When the police arrived, they discovered that the room was registered to Pam Hutchinson. Pam was scheduled to check out on April 6th, but extended it three more nights. When she failed to check out, housekeeping checked the room to make sure everything was okay, and that's when they found Pam murdered. Pam was found on the floor of the bathroom, with a pillow underneath her, and she was covered by a towel. It was apparent that Pam had been shot, and that the pillow had been used as a silencer. A bullet hole was found in the pillow, and had ricocheted up to the ceiling. A pink camouflage hat, stained with blood, found on the floor in a toothbrush in the sink, suggested that Pam had been ambushed. There was no sign of a struggle or forced entry. However, there was a sign of a robbery. Pam's purse was on the kitchen counter, but several items were missing. Her ID, wallet, cash, car keys, and car. Investigators also found a receipt from the Smoking Oyster Brewery, a restaurant just down the street from Pamela's condo. The police determined that Pam had been dead several days before she was found. The killer had turned the thermostat down to 61 degrees, and several towels were stuffed under the door to mask the smell. Obviously, the killer didn't want Pam to be discovered. The police also spoke to Pam's ex-husband, but he was hundreds of miles away and was ruled out. The police spoke to Pam's friends and asked them if they knew of anyone who'd want to hurt her. They said no, but one of them said that Pam had met another woman who was also vacationing there. The friend said that Pam had been planning on going out to dinner with this woman on April 5th. The police confirmed this when they found a receipt in Pam's purse from April 5th. She had used her credit card at the restaurant next to the resort called the Smoking Oyster Brewery. The police worked with the resort and restaurant to obtain the footage from the surveillance. Pam was seen on surveillance with another woman. Pam is also wearing the pink camouflage hat that was found in the bathroom. The two women were chatting with other customers, laughing, and seemed to be having a good time. They stayed at the restaurant until about 7.35 p.m. and can be seen on surveillance walking back to Pam's room. Back at the resort, investigators would obtain footage from their surveillance traveling back to when Pamela arrived on April 3rd. The camera from the fourth floor was angled to where you could see anyone who entered the fourth floor. At 3.49 p.m. that day, Pam was seen walking to her room with her luggage, and everything seemed normal. Looking at the footage from April 5th, that's the day she left the bar with that unknown female, they would be seen walking towards Pam's room together. Hours would pass until 8.34 p.m. that night when the unknown lady is seen standing by the elevator. She was just standing there looking into the parking area. Also, this day was the last day Pamela was seen alive. On the morning of April 6th, around 6 a.m., the same unknown female can be spotted coming from Pamela's room. She was wearing an orange top, and she was also carrying some luggage with her. It was odd because this lady was never seen carrying luggage into Pamela's room, so why is she leaving with a suitcase? At 8.32 a.m., she could be seen on surveillance again, but this time she had on a blue top and a bag that looked like it contained clothes, but investigators couldn't tell. Between the hours of 9.20 a.m. and about 1.30 p.m., the unknown lady can be seen coming and going from the victim's room, but Pamela still hasn't been seen once. 
parking lot footage would show this unknown lady getting into a vehicle at the rear of the lot. The car she entered was a white Cadillac Escalade. The white truck can be seen driving out of the parking lot. Looking over more of the footage, the lady returned on foot without the white truck, and at 1.51 p.m., she can be seen leaving again, but this time she went to a white Acura, the same Acura that belonged to Pamela. Checking for any leads on the white Cadillac, investigators would learn that days before this crime occurred, officers had a bolo out on that white Cadillac. Checking the tags on the truck, it returned to a husband and wife, David and Louis Reese. She and the truck were involved in an incident in Dodge County, Minnesota. Investigators would learn that Louis Reese was a person of interest in a homicide investigation. The homicide victim was the owner of the white Cadillac, 54-year-old David Reese. March 23, 2018, 13 days before Pamela's murder, officers were called to do a welfare check on David since his employers hadn't seen him for a few days. Upon arriving at David's residence, the officer knocked on the front door and received no response. As they proceeded to survey the exterior of the house, they observed an open window. Walking closer towards the window, the officer peered inside and discovered the lifeless body of David Reese lying on the bathroom floor. Upon entering the residence, they found that David had been covered by bath towels with two gunshot wounds inflicted by a small caliber handgun. Upon inspecting the residence, law enforcement officials determined that there were no signs of forced entry. Subsequently, they learned that David's wife had informed her colleagues that he had embarked on a fishing trip. However, the last time she was seen was when she departed from David's workplace while driving his truck, the same vehicle she had claimed he took on his fishing trip. During the course of their investigation, detectives discovered that David and Louis Reese had been experiencing frequent marital conflicts. Furthermore, they uncovered that Louis had a gambling problem, which had resulted in her losing a substantial amount of money. This had led to David ceasing to give her any money due to her persistent gambling habit. Upon examining their bank records, it was discovered that during the week of Dave's murder, Louis withdrew $11,000 from his account before fleeing. Meanwhile, in Florida, investigators compared photos of Louis Reese and an unidentified woman and found striking similarities between the two. Additionally, investigators observed similarities between the murders of Dave and Pamela. Both were shot with a small caliber gun and were found in a bathroom with towels covering their bodies. Finally, they received a crucial tip that Louis had been spotted at a bank in Fort Myers, using Pamela's cards to withdraw money from her accounts. The investigators wasted no time in rushing to the bank to review the surveillance footage. Sure enough, they were able to identify Louis as the person in question. They discovered that she had withdrawn a significant amount of money, totaling $5,000 from Pamela's bank account. This was a significant development in the case, as it confirmed the suspicion that Louis was behind the financial fraud that had been taking place. She continued to use Pamela's credit card to make purchases and withdraw money, leaving behind a trail of evidence that showed all the places she had been using the cards. The investigators were able to trace her movements and determine where she had been at different points in time. It wasn't just Pamela's credit card that Louis was using, however, it was also discovered that she had been using her own bank card at ATMs to withdraw money. Investigators were alerted to the potential whereabouts of a suspect in a heinous crime when they received a tip that she had been spotted in a Texas bar with a group of unfamiliar men. Following Reese's arrest, investigators obtained a search warrant for the suspect's hotel room. Upon entering the room, investigators discovered a wealth of evidence that would prove instrumental in the investigation. Most notably, they discovered the murder weapon that was used in the crime, as well as an array of personal belongings belonging to the victim, Pamela. Upon further analysis of the evidence, investigators began to piece together a theory of what may have occurred leading up to the crime. It was believed that the suspect had been involved in a dispute with her husband over outstanding gambling debts. In a fit of rage, the suspect is believed to have shot her husband in cold blood and stolen his money before fleeing to Florida to avoid detection. It is thought that, while in Florida, the suspect happened upon Pamela, who shared similar physical characteristics with the victim's wife. 
It was believed that the suspect targeted Pamela and wanted to steal her identity since they looked similar. Louis Reese was charged with first-degree murder of Pamela Hutchinson in Florida in December 2019 and subsequently pleaded guilty, receiving a life sentence without parole. Later, in 2020, Reese was sentenced to another life sentence for the murder of her husband, David Reese. 